how much artist development goes into the new artists that you have on your roster, um, like initially before they're signed, and like how much control do you have over what they develop to become? Well, w once we sign, it's it's like old school development with downtown. I mean, we do 100% day-to-day development. We'll keep somebody in the studio. Now the cost, you know, the cost kind of went up to this huge, crazy, you know, million dollar videos, and now it's back down to normal. You know, you can, we have, we have bands that will go and say, literally, what friends do you have that have a camera? We're gonna go shoot a video, you know, that kind of thing, because we don't want our artists to be in the hole. So we, we, I mean, I can only speak for downtown, but at downtown, we do 100% development. We do set, everything from setting up co-writes to, you know, keeping somebody in the studio for six months, if they need to be, to get the right songs, you know. That's yeah. what we do. And on the bigger, we're small, we can do that. And on the bigger label front, you know, it's incredibly expensive to market and promote a band. To go to radio with a single in a top 40 landscape or a rap landscape, it's incredibly expensive. So we really do want to, you know, we talked about songs, right? It's all about having that right song to go to radio with. Because if you go to radio with that wrong song, you're, you're asked out, you're losing a lot of money. And so you could even go to a song with, you know, what's interesting about the music, it's still a gut business, right? a and people or president will decide with the artist what single they want to go forth with, right? And then it gets to radio and radio loves it. But the research, the, the research that is a vital part of radio can kill your record quick. So you have to have the right record. So like you said, you got to make sure that they're there. Then probably the biggest department in my company is the social media comp department right. and they you know those six seven eight people work these work everything to get that stuff out there then it's about the touring aspect okay what tour can we get them on you know how can we afford to put them in a club um, brands and sponsors have become a huge part of our business to helping <laughs> defray <laughs> the cost of putting bands on the road or helping to co-promote so you know we're working it on all levels um, but, you know, when I worked at A&M Records 20 years ago, artist development, Soundgarden, for example, three records, two records before we really went to radio, right? Mm -hmm. Now it's like you've got to go, and you've got to go quick. Um, so it's a, different, it's a different world we live in, but it's still a part of it. But, again, the biggest key, when you get signed to a label or even get looked at, the questions, you know, I remember going back to the label and, like, one of the first questions in the you know, first meeting I was in, like, so how many Twitter followers and Facebook followers do I have? Yeah. Right, and that was like I'd been out of the business. I've been out of the record business for about two years. To coming back and that be one of the first questions, I was like, "Wow, yep. that's some whole other shit right there." And right. I think it's fascinating. But the bottom line is, any artist that's looking to get that major label deal and that just blow up, you got to do so much groundwork on your own. And this is some of the stuff we've talked about today to even get to that place where they're going to invest half a million dollars in you, whatever it takes to sign you, make your record, put you on the road, social market you, make videos, you blah, 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 blah. It's um, standard. You have to do that work yeah. yourself. And that's what it is to me, the biggest takeaway. And like Billy, what Billy has done to Christian in his business, it's like there is ways to do it. You can do it, but you have to want it more than the next guy. And you have to have a talented artist and be able to connect with fans on a level that you've never connected with before. I think you have to be careful what you wish for. You know, you gotta you gotta know that you want it. You know that, super that you bad. want that super bad, and that you want to be ready for it. So that you know you're going to be the president of artist development for your career. It's not something you outsource. You got to lead the charge. You're gonna be you got to be the one who who sets the tone and and leads the charge in terms of artist development. Or it starts to spin out, and then where's your authentic voice? What will people relate to? How will they know you're you? You're no longer this special snowflake. And, and just so you guys get a perspective from downtown, we have, for all of our artists, for downtown proper and Mercer Street, we've got one radio person. And we've got about 10 marketing people. And marketing covers, you know, all the new media, Twitter, blogging, all that stuff. I was going to say, when Chad, one made, radio person. Well, when Chad made the point about, you know, now going back down to video being like, who do you know who has a camera? It, it's down to being smart marketers again, knowing that you're going to spend money that's smart to spend. You know, you, yeah. can't, you can't spend money that's, that's just, you know, going down a hole. 
Right. Yeah, the best stuff that connects with some of our artists, uh, with our artists, the people are the viral videos that they shoot themselves or we give them a little bit of money or a camera and just go out and do it themselves because that's a direct connection. People don't want those slick, slick videos anymore. I mean, look, if you're J-Lo, you have to have that to be able to get on Entertainment Tonight or the Today Show. That's a whole other level of shit. But as far as the artists that are coming, the rappers, they go, they shoot their, one of their guys is on stage shooting their own stuff. You know, they jump in a crowd, it's filmed, it's up the next night, that night or whatever, and it's, mm -hmm. it's what it's all about. The and other that, sorry, go ahead, and, and, and that, you know, the South by Southwest performances, the Jazz Fest performances and all that, we video all that stuff, and sometimes instead of really, like we're doing it right now with White Denim, we released one single, and instead of releasing a second single, we've released exclusive video footage. And that's that's like our new second single right. video. Can video I just, footage. Can I also add that that this recurring theme that we're finding with um, not only with Kristen but with a lot of the artists that I've worked with through through my experience um, you know, working with other companies is that this this idea of giving people not an open book. Like, I don't think Twitter and Facebook should be, I scratched my ass two hours ago, and I had brec for, for breakfast, I had, you know, huevos rancheros. If you want that, follow me. Yeah. It should be, you know, all of this, the video, the, all the social media, should be giving people this wonderfully enticing view through the keyhole. Right. We are all voyeurs. We all like to see what's going on in there. What's it like? What's the world really like in there? But you don't want to lay it all out. Right. Give them a view through the keyhole. You can't see everything through the keyhole. You just get a little snapshot. And so the video you do, man, it should be just this great corner of your life. And that looks beautiful and makes people want to lean in. Then you're doing it right. 